to our missionary stories for children. We're so thankful that you tuned in. Today we're going to be having a new story about adventure in Brazil. And this is an exciting lesson. You are going to learn about the awful worship of Satan and the evil spirits. This is a lesson that every person should know. And we're going to be talking about this in these, all of these lessons and the awful things that happen when we do not know Christ as Savior and have not been born again by the Spirit of God. What can happen to you as you are deceived by these demonic spirits. So first of all, we take the warning that God gives us in 1 John 4, verse 1. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God, Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is God. Every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already it is in the world. So we have verse 4. Now this is 1 John 4, 4. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. He also gives another warning in 1 John 5. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. That's 1 John 5. 5 verse 21. So we see here, as we see the truth about the deception that's in the world today, that Satan is a deceiver. We see also in John 2, many deceivers are come, are entered into the world. Many deceivers are entered into the world. This is John verse 7. Who confess not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh? This is a deceiver and an antichrist. Now you must know these truths because John teaches us plainly that Jesus Christ came and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So we know that Jesus Christ is the living word. That's why you can't change the word of God. And verse 1 teaches us of verse of John, the gospel of John, verse 1. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. In the beginning was Jesus, and Jesus was with God, and Jesus was God. He became man that he could go to the cross and die for us. He was born of a virgin, and the conception was of the Holy Spirit, which is divine conception. Just like every person that is born again, you must be born by the Spirit of God. You see, he had to become man to die, and he had to be perfect. And he was perfect. He was truly God and truly man. And we must know this to be a child of God. And we will know the truth when we study this book. Let's pray. Oh, our gracious and dear Heavenly Father, we rejoice in thy goodness today. We thank thee and praise thee for the joy of serving thee. We thank thee that thy word is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. We pray for every person that's listening today. Enlighten their eyes that they may behold wondrous things out of thy word and save every 
person that is listening that does not know thee as Savior and help them to realize the awful deception that is in the world today that we must escape and the only way we can escape is through the precious blood of Christ. And we thank thee for the blood and the power that is in the blood. We thank thee for this saving power and we thank thee and praise thee for hearing and answering our prayers. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Now this adventure in Brazil is an absolute wonderful story. It's about an 11-year-old boy and his parents are missionaries in Brazil. This is a true story and he loved, he loved being in Brazil. Now he has vacation. This is just after Christmas. The Christmas tree is still up and he wakes up in the morning and he's so excited because he does not like school. Are we talking to some of you children that do not like school? Well, the boys in Brazil only went to the fourth grade. So he thinks that he should find an occupation where he doesn't have to go to school. So all of a sudden he realized he's on vacation two months out of school. And he thought, if I didn't have to go to school, everything would be perfect. And he said, oh, I don't have to get up today. I can just stay in bed as long as I want to. I am going to enjoy this vacation. But all of a sudden he realized he had an adventure today with his father, that they were going to do something. And he wanted to go with his father to find out about the demonic spirits and the evil spirits that was the greatest enemy to the missionaries in Brazil. So he jumped out of bed, got dressed, and went and knocked on his sister's door. He had three sisters. And he said, get up. It's time to go down for breakfast. And when he, they opened the door and they were already dressed. They were waiting for him. And they said, we have been waiting for you for ages. We will beat you down for breakfast. So he ran in really fast, washed his face, and got ready for breakfast. But they did beat him down there. So he was excited because this is a time when the New Year's celebration was going to take place. Now the Christmas tree was still up, so they were going to have to take the tree down before they went out for this day. And they had breakfast. And they were all excited over breakfast. So while they were having their breakfast, they were talking about what they were going to be doing this day. And the father told them everybody that helped trim the tree had to help untrim the tree to take all of the things off. So they didn't like that because they loved putting the tree up. And he liked counting his money because he, had a, he got a lot of money for Christmas and he wanted to buy a bike. And he counted it all the time to see if he had enough. But after they have breakfast, now this is something that every family should do that is a true child of God, and this is greatly neglected today. The first thing they did after breakfast, the father read the Bible. They sang a song. Then they had to take notes. You see, if you don't take notes, you can never learn God's Word because you're to use all the senses that you have in the study of God's Word. So when you write it down, you are learning. This is so important for every person. That's why we want to train all of the people in this area how to study and to know the Word of God and how to be able to give it out. We're still praying that every person in this city, every person in our listening area will write to our box number and we will be glad to teach you the Word of God so you can teach others. Every child of God must teach others. This is how we are to do as true believers. So then every person also had to pray. And this is what we do. We teach you to pray. We teach you the Word of God, and this is the most important thing that can happen to you. 
you that's why we see so much evil today is because you do not know how to claim the promises that God has for us see praying is claiming his promises that he's going to do what he said. So each one then had to pray. They learned to pray as little children. And this was important. And then they discussed what their father had read. This way they learned. So his mother said to him, what are we going, she said to him, which sport do you like best? Do you like football, basketball, or swimming? He said, I like the one that I'm doing at the time the best, and I love all of them. But he said, oh, mother, but I love you more than anything. I wonder how many of you children have told your mother you love her and thank her for all that she does for you. That's what Roger did. Roger was 11 years old. He loved his mother and his father. And this is for each of you that's listening. Honor your father and your mother as long as you live. This is the first commandment with a promise. He promises you long life. And this is well pleasing to the Lord. Honor your father and mother. This is a commandment that every person should know. So then they packed their lunch. He says, we're going to go today to the pool and swim. So they went swimming. They carried their lunch and everybody's sitting and eating, but Roger is swimming. And he's thinking about how long would he have to swim and to prepare to be an Olympic swimmer. He's wanting things with action, anything with action he loves. So they got back home. After they got back home, they were preparing to go to the New Year's Eve celebration. And this was a time when they worshiped the evil spirits. And Karen, the oldest girl, said, will you tell me when you come back what you saw and what happened? And Roger said, Father says that I can't tell anyone what we see because really, he said, it's the worship of demonic spirits. And even Father has never seen this, but he's heard about it. And he says, it is so awful that probably I won't even sleep tonight, and I certainly won't want to talk about it. So she knew that what her father said was best. So they got home got everything ready and prepared to get on the bus to go to this celebration. After he, when he got on the bus, the first thing he did was to give out tracts telling how to get to heaven. He wanted everyone to know the truth. And as he was passing out the tracts, he, his Roger was seeing all the people and all the things that were happening. And he thought, he hated to go to school, but he wanted to find something that he could do where he would not have to go to school longer than his Brazilian friends. They were his friends and they wasn't going to school after, the, after they were in the fourth grade. So he's always thinking about how he hates school. So then when they got to the celebration, they saw all these women and all of these men, most more women than men. And he said, Father, why are there more women than men? He said, they are going to be the ones that's going to be receive the evil spirits today. And all of these nicely dressed women? And he said, yes. And he saw the idol that they put up. Everybody had an idol. They put up an idol of what they worshiped. And they had all of these candles around, which they put around on the wall, a crucifix, and all of these things that was to bring good luck, good luck charm, made of seeds and things and animal parts and things like this, and a clenched fish, fist. So, 
as they, he saw the people. And then the women, the first thing the women had to do before they could come, a Baba, they had to put their hand down in boiling oil and get a cotton ball out of the boiling oil and put in their mouth and it wouldn't burn them. If they did this, then they became a Baba. Then they were supposed to have the power to heal diseases or to cause death. Roger could not believe his eyes. He saw how they were worshiping idols. They made the idols and put them under a canopy and put five, had a five star up over the canopy and they made an idol of whatever they were going to worship or whatever they became. First of all, they believed that whatever they worshiped, that why this was by the seashore, this was the goddess of the waters. Whatever they worshiped, the evil spirits was to bring into their bodies. They were to give their soul and their bodies to the devil. Then they believed that they would become whatever they wanted to worship of a saint that had died. Saint George was one of the saints that rode a white horse, they believed. So they would ask for this to come into their bodies and then they began galloping like a horse. Others asked for an animal that had died would come into their bodies and then they would make sounds like an animal. Then they would even ask to be like children, the spirit that would come in them. They were supposed to act like whatever they were worshiping. This was so hard for Roger that was 11. He, his father said to him, Roger, if you had not been a strong Christian, I could not have brought you to this place. So he sees the women and he sees the idol worship and they are acting like children, acting like they're riding on horses. And if they were like St. George, then they would put a helmet on, they would put a red cape on, then the, they would act like children if they had received the spirits of children, and then whatever animal they use that. This went on for three hours, barefoot, dancing, swaying back and forth, completely under the power of Satan, making all kinds of noises. This was supposed to be a celebration. Those of you that are listening, if you're not a child of God, you're a child of the devil. God's word plainly teaches this. He is causing you to do things that is a sin in God's sight. Satan is our enemy. We must know that in the last days, he is working harder because we have learned in these lessons and you know what God's word says about Satan. And it tells us in John 8, Jesus told us, ye are of your father, the devil. This is John 8:44 and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh, he speaketh a lie of his own for he is a liar and the father of it. So here we have 
And because I tell you the truth, you believe me not. This is what Christ said about the devil. And what does he do? Chapter 10 of John, the thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. That's what Satan does. He comes to destroy you children. He wants to destroy you. He has no love for you. You will never have any peace. You'll never have any hope or you'll never have any love if you follow the devil because he has nothing but hate and he's a murderer. All murderers come from Satan and God's word says that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. So you can see that this is truly what is happening. Greater today, now this was many, many years ago, and we're going to find out how these children grew up and served the Lord because of all that they had seen in Brazil. And today, we need this here more than we've ever needed the Word of God because we're seeing our children do these horrible things, and it's all from Satan. Then at 12 o'clock, when 12 o'clock came, they pushed their boat out into the waters with all the candles around the boat. They had a cross. They would say prayers, and the prayers that they would say, they would even use the prayer that God taught his disciples to pray with their heathen worship. Then here is the canopy that they put up there and the idol that they worshiped. Now lighting candles cannot have any spiritual meaning because Christ is the light of the world. I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. He says, ye are not children of darkness, but children of light. This was the most darkest time that Roger's dad as a missionary and Roger had ever seen. Three hours of worshiping the devil. And then when they pushed this out into the waters, they could see the beautiful light shining in, in the darkness the light of those candles. But that is not the light that Christ desires us to have. We have no light within us unless it comes from Christ. He is the light and we do not walk in darkness. So they went home. He said to his father when he left, he said, Father, can I become a missionary? and help these people to know the truth. And he knew the truth because the truth is that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. And he wanted to tell them, but he couldn't sleep that night. The next morning at breakfast, he just all he could do was shake his head. And his father said to him, Oh, I have prayed. Your mother and I have prayed that you would grow up and serve the Lord in whatever way the Lord wants you to serve. And he said, but how would I have to go to school? How long would I have to go to school? Do I have to go to school a long time to serve the Lord? He said, well, God wants trained servants. You see, that's why we want to train all of you. Every person needs to be trained. We must reach every person because Satan is just now beginning to show his power in all the healings and all of the evil that's going on. It's all from Satan. We have to know this. So then the next morning he saw how sad his son was. He couldn't do anything but just shake his head. And Karen wouldn't ask what he had seen because she knew that when the time would come, she, that Roger would tell her or her father. So he saw, he said, well, I think it's time for us to have another adventure for today. Let's go. I am going somewhere. And if you can be ready in 10 minutes, if you can be ready in 10 minutes, you can go with me. 
In 10 minutes, he was ready. He had to pack his bag because he was going to spend the night. So sure enough, he got in the Jeep. As they were going through the villages, he saw all of this dry cleaning place with all the clothes hanging out. He saw a lady with a bag on her, a package on her t head. That's how she carried the things. And a man with fish on his t head. And they heard the Jeep and they almost lost the things off the head. So he said, well, where are we going? He said, I will tell you when the time comes. But Father, I, I want to know. And he was laughing and enjoying the trip. And when they stopped, they stopped at this man's house, Lucas, that, a Brazilian that had a beautiful voice and could sing. He got out of the Jeep. He said to him, oh, I hope that your voice is ready for the, music, for the meeting tonight. Then he knew they were going to Pastor Silas's meeting and Lucian, with Lucas, was going to be singing. So they got in the Jeep. They all went together and began to sing. As they began to sing, they went through a village and they were having a carnival. Now this was weeks after this. I said the next day, this was weeks after this. And they were going through an awful, awful carnival where people were getting ready to prepare for Lent. Like Mardi Gras here in America, they were almost turning their Jeep over. They crowded around their Jeep. I want you, every person that's listening today, to realize what God's Word says. Submit yourselves to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you.